This lecture is for students at Missouri State University West Plains. So this is the APA lecture. APA stands for American Psychological Association, which is very different from modern language association, which is the usual format that students learn about how to cite in a paper. APA does look different. It has a title page with a running head. It does have, instead of a works cited page, it has a references page. APA uses headings to separate information, which students usually like because it means that there's more space used up on the paper. And in citations only, not in the actual text of the paper, but in the citations at the end, especially, the capitalization rules differ. And lastly, numbers between under 10, so 10 and below, are written out. And that means that anything else above is not. You get to use Arabic numbers. So the title page format is probably the biggest change for students. Um, this is what the title should look like. You have an example here on the right hand side. All right, here at the top here it's got the words running head and then a shorter version of the title that can't be any longer than 40 characters. All right, in the center is your title right, and then who you are and then the school from which you are writing this paper. And at the bottom you get to write the words author note and then tell us what class that this paper was prepared for. All right, and second of the f other pages, um, if you look here at the top, the words running head are gone. Now it's just how great. It's a shorter version of the title. All right, again, the full title is again at, on the second page. Isn't that fun? Page number is over here on the right hand side. All right, and then there's levels. So level one header, level two header, level three header. And generally at this college anyway, you're not going to get any further than three levels of headers. And so think about these sort of like in your textbook, um, you'll have the big header for the, you know, the big idea and then that idea is broken down into smaller headers. Same idea here. So students often wonder, what do I cite? And generally the answer is, if it didn't come out of your, your head originally, then you want to cite it. If it comes from any part of your research, you want to cite it. If it's a quote or a date or a statistic or any kind of number, well, you definitely want to cite that because it's sort of a dead giveaway. Um, for APA, you need to cite both in the text and at the end in the references page. That's your bibliographic citations, and you have to do both. You can't just do the one. So for introducing research, um, you want to include your information about your researcher. You want to tell your author, you know, tell who your author is, tell you where you found that information. Um, and that's called a signal phrase or an identifying tag. What that does is give the street cred of your source and therefore you are basking in the glory because obviously if you found a very good source and you agree with that source, you must be very, very smart. All right. On a more practical note, students often like to include introductory and phrases or signal phrases because um, they use up more words. So I've given you a couple of examples here. So according to Paul Campos, so here's your author and then the year because the year comes after the author's name in APA format. In the book, the diet myth, so that tells you what kind of source this is and then blah blah blah. All right, same sort of thing here. Here's your article title. All right, here's your author. Here's your year and then what it's about. Blah blah blah. In your in-text citations for APA, you need to include the author, the date, and the page number. All right, so if you have a signal phrase, then the date goes directly after the name. So according to Tim Cravens, 2011, and then here's the direct quote, all knowledge is power to someone, and then here's your page number. Okay, you can do it another way. You can include Cravens explains, blah, 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 and then at the end have the year and the page number. All right, notice that in APA, you get to have the P dot and then the number to indicate page number. All right, if you don't have a signal phrase, maybe this is the fourth time you've used the source, you can just use the author's last name, comma, the year, comma, the page number. All right, do note that websites don't have page numbers, so don't make them up. I know sometimes it says like one out of three, but if you'd increase the size of the print, that could have been one out of 12. And so don't don't add some page numbers. Just you know, include your information as you have it, which is your author and your year. 
As a general rule for writing, um, it's a good idea to paraphrase your long quotes rather than have them be block quotes in your text. Even though it takes up a lot of space and students are like, oh, it takes up space, that's a good thing. It's not a good thing. Um, generally, you can say it in shorter than the original and often better than the original. All right, and so you want to paraphrase most of your work. That way, you wrote like it sounds like you wrote it. It's all your voice, not like 17 people's voices all crammed in together, right? And you, that way, when you really need the expert's voice to be heard, that's when you have your quotes. So here's an example of the difference between quoted and paraphrased. So here's the quoted. Look at all those words. And then here's the paraphrase, right? It's a shorter version of the original, and it's in my own words, right? Doesn't have to be a big deal. All right, some last thoughts about plagiarism. Make sure if you take your information word for word, you put that information in quotation marks. That's what these are, quotation marks, right? What the quotation marks do is they tell the reader this is lift this is a shorter piece from a larger piece right? it's an excerpt from a larger piece all right so you want to make sure anything you've taken directly word for word is in quotation marks and then make sure you include your author year and the page number where you found that quote all right if you paraphrase your information and you put it all in your own words you still have to include the author date and page numbers all right if you do not do both of these things it is considered plagiarism. All right, let's move on to bibliographic citations. So bibliographic citations give you all the information that any kind of reader would need in order to go find your original source. All right, these are organized by alphabetical order by last name. They're formatted in a hanging indent, which means that the first line goes all the way across, but the subsequent lines are indented. All right. Um, and bibliographic citations are organized differently depending on the type of source. So you need to use your rules for writers to make sure that you are punctuating it correctly. All right, so I've given you some examples here. All right, please notice some things that are important about APA. All right, first thing, in each of these examples, the author's last name is first, comma, and then the first initial. APA does not care about the author's first name. It just wants the first initial. All right, you'll notice that the year published is always second. This date, no matter what happens, is always second, and it's in parentheses. All right, for the book, it's the year. For the newspaper, it's the exact day. For the magazine or journal, it's the year and the month. For the article and website, it's the day it was last updated. All right, notice here the title in small letters. All right, so capitalization points are different in APA. All right, and so the title is in small letters. Right. And in the book, it's italicized because it's the only it's the only source. But if you're using an article from a newspaper, an article from a journal, article from a website, then the title title of the article is in lower case, right? But it is not italicized because it's not the end source. Right? The end source is the title of your newspaper, which is italicized. The title of your magazine, which is italicized. The title of your site is italicized. Okay. All right, then you have the rest of your publishing information after that. Now, people are jerks. They are not thinking, hey, Susie Johnson is going to be using this source to you know, be cited in her paper, so I need to include all the information. Sometimes you have to do a little bit more digging. All right, so for example, sometimes, especially on a website, it won't be, you know, Sam Johnston, who wrote an article, would be the Associated Press. Right? That is a corporate author. All right, and so you include the corporate author. All right, and then your title, your date, your title, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes the information isn't always easy to find on a website. Sometimes you have to go to the home page to find your author. Maybe you have to find your publisher there. All right, and that the term copyrighted by is usually a good hint that's your publisher. Sometimes that's where your last update is. And sometimes you just don't have that information because, again, people on the Internet, they're kind of jerks. So if you don't have a publisher, you skip it. If you don't have a date, use the end dot d dot. All right, and that's all lowercase and still in parentheses. If you don't have a page number, skip it. If you don't have an author, skip it. Start with the title. Remember, number two is always the date. So then instead of author, date, title, 
you'd have title, date, and then whatever else after that. An annotated bibliography is sort of a meta step in your sourcing. All right, what it's designed to do is help you as a student to pull together your information so that um, you are not just having a stack of books or a stack of articles that you have to keep going through to try to find the right information, where was it, and which one was this article, etc. Right. It's designed to help you organize that. Right. It is a summary of the information that you found, right? it, and it's your notes about each source. You know, how useful was this? Right. And it also gives you a place to put in your citations so that as you are writing your essay, you have your citations there and you have your summary of your article, your research right there. So here's an example of what that would look like. So here's your citation, right? Notice that the title of the article is in lowercase, not the title of the book actually. All right. And then here is the, here is the summary. And then the last sentence here is just sort of a commentary about whether or not this is a useful article or a useful book. Okay, and then lastly, I've given you a student practice here. All right, and they're designed here to um, give you everything you're going to need to be able to do the in-text citation, to be able to do the bibliographic citation. Um, and it is your job as a student to figure out what goes where with how and which one's the quote, which one's the year, which one's the page number, which one's the author, etc. Good luck.